so we know you love your wrestling podcasts. But maybe you're looking to take a break or supplement your wrestling podcasts with another genre. I've got a great option for you. The podcast is called Philip and Michael Talk Movies. Doesn't get more simple than that, right? So what exactly is this? It's a comedy podcast where indie pro wrestler Philip Shadburn and filmmaker Michael Benton, they tell you everything you ever wanted to know about your favorite movies. They do 80s action, comedies, horror, slasher movies, sci-fi, and a whole bunch more stuff. So check out some of the movies that they've reviewed. Silent Night, Jingle All the Way. They did a, a bit of a Christmas special. They did Edward Scissorhands, Alien, John Carpenter's E.T., Fire in the Sky, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and Arrival. So, guys, this is a podcast you're going to love. I was listening to just their latest couple of episodes on Close Encounters and Arrival. It, I was laughing out loud. I mean, they are just such a dynamic duo. They have a great chemistry. The audio is second to none. They have a 4.9 rating on Apple Podcasts. That's impossible. I mean, that is impossible. Guys, we have like a 4.1, all right? They're kicking our ass. Uh, they've got a 4.9 rating on Apple Podcast. It's nearly impossible to do. So that tells you the quality of this podcast. And if you want to just get away, you're a movie aficionado and you love kind of 80s and slashers and things, check out Philip and Michael Talk Movies. They also have a Patreon uh, page if you're interested at patreon.com slash PMTM. So you can go support them there. Of course, they're available nearly everywhere you have podcasts as well. So check out Philip and Michael Talk Movies. Have you searched for yourself online lately? What did you find? The last thing you need is your home address and phone number readily available on the web to stalkers, debt collectors, and Karens. You need Privacy Pros. Privacy Pros works by pairing you one-on-one -on -one with a data specialist, monitoring over 160 sites, removing your information, and sending quarterly reports. Let Privacy Pros get their hands dirty so you don't have to. Visit privacypros.com slash wrestling. That's privacypros.com slash wrestling for more information. Start this new year off clean with Privacy Pros, the premier professional opt-out services. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. This is my iron. You're going to acknowledge me. All right, everybody, welcome to the Royal Rumble preview, the official Royal Rumble preview. And actually, as we speak right now, SmackDown's going on. So I have no clue. Neither, neither does my co-host, who I will tell you in just a minute. Uh, we do not know what the hell is going on on SmackDown. So every prediction and every thought that we have right now is without the SmackDown event. We don't know, but I wouldn't imagine that anything mag any, anything of large magnitude is going to happen on SmackDown. So with that assumption in mind, guys... I want to bring back to you a co-host that has not joined this show in two months. It's my own fault, uh, or blame my six-month-old daughter. And that's Ashley Mad, who is back with us to talk about the Royal Rumble. It's been two months too long, Ashley. How how are you doing? I am great, Matt. Thank you so much for having me back. It has been like like we had said briefly before we started uh, recording. It's been two months, which is crazy because it feels like forever. But then again, it feels like two weeks, like like you said. So it's it's just it's wild, and especially in the wrestling world. Like time is is a weird thing, a weird concept. And I'm so happy to be back. Thank you, especially for the Royal Rumble. It'll be fun. Yeah, I mean, th that's exactly right. Like the Royal Rumble is viewed by many people. You hear this all the time. And everybody, every time someone says it, it's like the it's like an original thought, like that when they say it. Right. Like you hear somebody say, oh, Royal Rumble, that's my favorite pay-per-view. It's even I like it better even than WrestleMania. Right. Like everybody says it as if it's the first person to say it. But it's true. I, I think a lot of people do believe and, and feel that way that the Royal Rumble is a more fun pay-per-view. And I totally understand why, because this is a pay-per-view that usually delivers it's a pay-per-view that outside of a few rare exceptions like batista winning the rumble and and roman reigns winning in 2015 generally they 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 have a hit with the royal rumble and particularly the royal rumble match and match is now so this is a pay-per-view it's so much fun the countdown uh every few minutes where the crowd chants along it, it's just you never know when that buzzer hits who's coming out and 
there's so many different things right now going into this pay-per-view. I've never gone into a pay-per-view where I have had this many possibilities. There are so many dozens of rabbit holes that you could go down. It's mind-boggling with things that are moving, people returning, forbidden doors being open. We can get into that. <laughs> but when you look at this pay-per-view, Ashley, are you, are you confident? Or, or maybe, maybe you're a little more clear than I am. But do you look at this pay-per-view and say, I've got a great grasp on this? Or are you looking at this like, I really have no idea what's going to happen? There's like a few, like maybe I'd rather say a couple things that I'm pretty certain on. I would say probably 99% on. But no, dude, like overall, I I have no idea how they're really like the the Rumble matches themselves to me are the biggest question marks from probably this year, more so than the past few years that I can remember Um, in I am excited because, like you, like you were just saying, the Royal Rumble in and of itself is just ex- an exciting concept. But it's like I don't, I don't really know who to be more excited for because it's it's a bunch of, ah, I don't want to say random people in a demeaning way, but it there's not a whole bunch of oh I don't like I don't I wouldn't even say there's about five people who are like oh a clear shot yeah like it's we could totally see it being him type thing or or like a handful of people that you would it's kind of like a clear cut. Um, and maybe maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm missing a lot of obvious things, but it, that's what makes like the predictions so hard. Like as I was sitting here uh, trying to p- make my predictions prior to the call, I, it's really hard, man. Like it's and I think that's what makes it fun, too. Like I think this both of the Rumble matches for that matter will kind of whoever wins them both. I feel like it will it'll kind of mean that much more and especially in the atmosphere that they're in i think the the stadium that they're in holds what like forty thousand people was that the number that they were saying or around that amount something yeah, like that yeah, i think it is yeah so it's just cool it's going to be a big time feeling too and we're still kind of fresh from you know you know getting like a huge crowd back so i think it's gonna be really fun you know and i think even if it is just like an average viewing at home. I think the fans there are going to be like super stoked and they're in St. Louis and I not to get ahead of myself. Um, but I think the, the whole hometown with Randy Orton thing will be kind of interesting to see the, the reaction he gets. Yeah. I, I'm trying not to, uh, to give any away my predictions as well, but yes, that that's a connection. I'm definitely going to talk about and I, things that I think could happen because it's Randy's hometown that uh, we'll get into, but I, yeah, I'm very interested to hear that. I think, Given that he's the hometown hero, he's going to get a massive reaction. But, but as I completely bury the lead here, I think that it's going to be an opportunity for things to happen, right? Like I think, I think there's something there, at least in my mind. So uh, we can jump into that in in a minute. But let's start off with the the uh, the matches here, and we of course will get to the Royal Rumble match itself. But uh, let's start with the the matches that aren't the Royal Rumble matches, and start off with Edge and Beth Phoenix versus. The Miz and Maurice. Ashley, your take, your prediction. So for this one, and it's so it's so funny to think like how far we've come and, and maybe fun is not the right word, but it, it's it's to see an Edge and Beth Phoenix tag match versus the Miz and Maurice in, in two thousand twenty two, it, it's just bizarre, right? Like a couple years ago we like I would have never have imagined it. So it's just cool to see Edge and Beth like actually interacting on WWE T V and as a married couple and everything. Um I mean I I feel like they could have originally I thought this was going to be saved more for like a WrestleMania type match, but looking back or looking forward now, they probably want edge as a a singles guy. So I think this is going to be it. You know, I think, I think edge and Beth are going to get their victory here. And I hope Maurice kind of sticks around though, going forward with the Miz, because I think she really adds a lot to him as a character. Um, but yeah, unfortunately for Miz and Maurice, and I don't, I would be interested to see their like track record as a tag team. Um, their wins and losses, but I think Edge and Beth are going to take it here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's to me something that I look at. And I look at this match and I, the outcome, as I said, said this pay per view is unpredictable. This is the one of the things that it's, it seems like a foregone conclusion that Edge and Beth Phoenix should win. I don't see any need for Miz and Maurice to win because I believe they have bigger plans for Edge at WrestleMania, which means he needs a little bit of momentum from this and he can springboard right into a WrestleMania season. With the victory, um, I, I could see – well, first of all, my prediction, let's get that out of the way, Edge and Beth Phoenix win. But I could see Beth Phoenix p- pinning The Miz 
as Beth Phoenix has been put over like a million bucks by Edge and how strong she is, and she is a very strong woman. I mean, she's stronger than some probably of some of the men on the roster. She's a she's an absolute uh, beast, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean that in a, in a good way. Uh, she's a very tough woman. So that said, I see I could see her pinning the Miz, even though it's a mixed tag match, which means that the men have to compete with the men and the women have to compete with the women. But I could see see them foregoing those rules because it would be a better story if Beth Phoenix pinned the Miz. Um, so I, I could see them breaking the rules there. But regardless, I think it should be a fun match. And in, in the real sell here isn't even Edge and Miz. Like, I think a lot of people want to see Beth Phoenix get their hand, his, her hands on Maurice, I think that's kind of been the the story here that's been central to this whole program, believe it or not, is actually Beth Phoenix getting her hands on Maurice because we've seen Edge get his hands on the Miz. He took a spear like there there are there's some, you know, there's something to be said for Edge and Miz going at it and Edge getting his hands on there on the Miz and being able to beat the hell out of him. But I think the story here is Beth Phoenix because Maurice for the last few weeks has been taunting her and then hitting her with a brick in a purse and all, all those things, which I think was brilliantly done. And Maurice, <laughs> so well, perfect. it really was. And, uh, you know, for, for all the things that Maurice can't do, which is like sometimes her her uh, French accent is it doesn't translate perfectly well with the English language. At times she almost has like glitches. in when she speaks because she doesn't find the right, right words to, to speak. Yeah. to me like i'm not complaining about that it's I, I think that she like you said adds so much to the miz's character i hope she doesn't go away after this i, I really don't she, i mean you talk about the miz being insufferable with john morrison which i really really found them very eye rolling and almost channel changing the miz flips like completely for me and he is the best version of the miz when maurice is there so i do foresee edge and beth phoenix taking the win probably beth phoenix defeating the miz after the probably the glam slam on the Miz, um, that's my guess. Uh, do do you have any thoughts on that? No, no, I could definitely see it playing that out that way. If if not getting the pin directly on Maurice herself, yeah, but because yeah. part of me was wondering too, like if, if they were going to try to continue just like a Beth and Maurice uh, just singles route after this, but I don't. You need again, like no disrespect, Maurice or anything, but like she was just never really. I mean, she was the, the Divas Champion, I guess, but like she wasn't really like what she's at and correct me if i'm wrong but like i think obviously what she's going to be most known for is being like the manager sidekick partner to the miz you know so i just i don't i part of me was wondering if they may try to do something funny like that small percentage um by having like maurice pull a fast one on beth but i i, I definitely see beth getting the pinfall here but i could see it being on maurice too yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, either way, I think Beth Phoenix gets the victory. I, mean, I think she gets yeah, the victory for, sure. for her team because I don't think Edge needs to. I mean, it's a tag match. You know, it's it's not as focused and highlighted on Edge getting the victory here. And you know what? I think it's something that Edge is genuinely excited about. Like Adam Copeland is. Yeah. How can you not be excited about this? You know, so it's just something that just is a bonus upon your return. It's not just about your career. It's being able to tag with your wife. Like, how often does that happen? You know, so I'm sure he's he's genuinely excited about this to be able to say, hey, you know, my return. Yes, it got stifled by COVID, all that stuff. But, you know, now that we're back and he's able to tag with his wife, like, you know, that's that's pretty cool. And I'm sure that he's looking at this saying, you know, this is uh, this is a lot of fun. So. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into another match here. Another one that seems predictable, honestly, Probably the most predictable match on the entire card, because after this, it goes into no man's land of predictions because there are just there, there's it's mind boggling. But let's let's get to the Raw Women's Championship match. Becky Lynch versus Dewdrop. Let me just ask, is there any chance, Ashley, that Dewdrop wins here? Stay right there. The WWE podcast will return after this quick break. Have you searched for yourself online lately? What did you find? The last thing you need is your home address and phone number readily available on the web to stalkers, debt collectors, and Karens. You need Privacy Pros. Privacy Pros works by pairing you one-on-one -on -one with a data specialist, monitoring over 160 sites, removing your information, and sending quarterly reports. Let Privacy Pros get their hands dirty so you don't have to. Visit privacypros.com slash wrestling. That's privacypros.com slash wrestling for more information. 
Start this new year off clean with Privacy Pros, the premier professional opt-out services. So we know you love your wrestling podcasts, but maybe you're looking to take a break or supplement your wrestling podcasts with another genre. I've got a great option for you. The podcast is called Philip and Michael Talk Movies. Doesn't get more simple than that, right? So what exactly is this? It's a comedy podcast where indie pro wrestler Philip Shadburn and filmmaker Michael Benton, they tell you everything you ever wanted to know about your favorite movies. They do 80s action, comedies, horror, slasher movies, sci-fi, and a whole bunch more stuff. So check out some of the movies that they've reviewed. Silent Night, Jingle All the Way. They did a, a bit of a Christmas special. They did Edward Scissorhands, Alien, John Carpenter's E.T., Fire in the Sky, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and Arrival. So, guys, this is a podcast you're going to love. I was listening to just their latest couple of episodes on Close Encounters and Arrival. It, I was laughing out loud. I mean, they are just such a dynamic duo. They have a great chemistry. The audio is second to none. They have a 4.9 rating on Apple Podcasts. That's impossible. I mean, that is impossible. Guys, we have like a 4.1, all right? They're kicking our ass. Uh, they got a 4.9 rating on Apple Podcast. It's nearly impossible to do. So that tells you the quality of this podcast. And if you want to just get away, you're a movie aficionado and you love kind of 80s and slashers and things, check out Philip and Michael Talk Movies. They also have a Patreon uh, page if you're interested at patreon.com slash PMTM. So you can go support them there. Of course, they're available nearly everywhere you have podcasts as well. So check out Philip and Michael Talk Movies. Welcome back to the WWE Podcast. Let's get back to more great wrestling audio. No, no. Like, I, I want to give her, like, maybe, like, a 1% chance, but especially with a lot of things that have been kind of speculating um, regarding yep. rumbles and stuff, like, I don't, I definitely don't see, like, if, if there were any chance, any small percentage prior to maybe this week, I, I think it, it definitely would away, which is sad, you know, but in a way, too, like, I, I, I don't really, like, I'm, I'm not going to be upset when Becky wins. Um, That's my prediction that like, Becky's going to retain here, but it's not... To me, it doesn't feel like one of those things where like Dewdrop is getting overlooked or or anything like that. Like, cause I feel like she's been looking, you know, pretty decent for, you know, all things considered. Like, I feel like it could have gone a lot worse when even Marie got fired and and everything. But I think she kind of needs to take this L right now and then go back to the side. And, and but I think she needs. I think the key with her is is keeping her on TV too and just getting like dominant victories and just kind of doing that thing. Um. And it, it sucks, but I, you know, I don't know how long Becky is going to be tied up with, because we'll get into all that later. But I think Dewdrop is is good, just kind of being just dominant on her own. And then if you need her in two, three months, like if if you keep her high, like maybe then, you know, depending on like I said how things go. But for now, uh, I think it's all it's all Becky. This is yeah. There's there's no. To me, this isn't even something to think about that Dewdrop wins. And yes, you could have interference from, uh, you know, that individual who we all I think is are, it's like the worst kept secret right now. Uh, we'll get into that. Could somebody come in and screw over Becky Lynch leading to a WrestleMania match? Yeah, but I think you want Becky Lynch going into WrestleMania champion. I think having Becky Lynch go from WrestleMania 35, where she got her championship first to WrestleMania 38, where she's going to defend it, and she hasn't lost that championship. Yes, she took a year and a half off, but essentially she can claim she's been champion for uh, or undefeated for three years. You know, I think that that's something to be said, and there's some symmetry here going on between WrestleMania 35 and now that we all know what it is. So Becky Lynch retains, period, end of subject, and I, I just don't foresee any situation in which she doesn't win here. I, I, I would give this a 100% chance. I, I wouldn't even think – I yeah. mean, I, I very rarely do that because I can always see, eh, well, this – no. Like, this this is just a very straightforward – it's it's building Dewdrop into uh, getting – it's building her character. It's, it's helping getting her into the minds of fans as a potential main eventer down the line. Uh, that's what it's about, and that's what it should be about because when you look at where Dewdrop started with Eva Marie as just like the – Sidekick, this right. this this uh, kind of pathetic, soft-spoken sidekick that Eva Marie gave her the name Dewdrop, and she couldn't even use her former name. 
you know, she just was she people would speak for her. Even Marie, was, they've never explained why that happened, that relationship to now. I mean, she's one of the most improved women on the roster over the last six months. And oh, uh, yeah. so by far her, her, her I like her promos. She's obviously got from a physical standpoint, got an advantage. She looks different. That's an advantage. So I, I, I expect this to be a competitive match. But I don't foresee do job. I mean, it's just zero chance. Anything else before we move on? No. Yeah. Yeah. This is okay. Now let's get into the fun. Let's get into the fun here. Oh boy. Um. Let's get into the men's Royal Rumble match. Um. Mm-hmm. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. I, I, I had that, and then I'm gonna do the Rumble matches at the end because I think it's gonna bleed into the Rumble matches of things that happen here. <sighs> Roman yeah. Reigns and Seth Rollins. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to take this one first, but, uh, I'm going to, this one to me is a little more certain than, than the other, the WWE championship match. But, uh, Ashley, yeah, you take this one first, Reigns or Rollins. It, it, you know, so first of all, I, I'm going to just start with, I wish it wasn't happening right now. Um, just for the record for, for myself, I, I wish they, didn't go right to Rollins because this match could have been like a WrestleMania match. This match could have been, I feel like you could have gotten much, so much more story and time and, and just a lot out of this, of their history. You know, I mean, I'm great. I'm, I'm happy they have acknowledged, you know, what they have and, and even saying, you know, Mox was an interesting thing um, from, from Rollins. But I think it's, it's, I have like so part of me originally thought you know maybe Seth had a chance but and this is going to sound crazy but I don't know if you saw did you see the moving graphics that WWE put out for some of the the matches for the Rumble no. on their Twitter page so they you remember the moving graphics from back in the day yes like yeah so I oh I am a huge fan of them I don't know why like they make me so happy <laughs> like so I don't I had to send to myself so happy like I it's just one of those little things where it just feels like a big deal but anyway they put one out for of course Rollins and Reigns and just seeing that I think it was like a 15 second clip of their their little their animation it was just like Seth was being a complete jokester and like fake punching the side and just like laughing and just looking like a complete goof like you know the Seth that we've seen mm-hmm. And on the other side, Roman is just standing there with his championship on his shoulder, looking completely serious. Like, I think he may have looked to the side once and then just looked back at straight ahead at the camera. And for whatever reason, and again, this may just be me being crazy, but it when I saw that, I was like, yeah, that's confirmation right there. There's no way Seth is, is winning this. You know, it, it's all Roman. It's a part of me thought maybe there's a chance Seth can pull something out and then just have a whole cluster going forward with the title picture leading into Mania. But I don't know, man. It, and and tell me if I'm crazy, but I, for whatever reason, seeing that that little 15 second clip and, and just seeing, just Roman looks like a champion. Roman looks like a big deal. Like Roman looks like a star, you know. Um. So yeah, like it's just not time. It Roman's got to keep it. He, yeah. The so yes, I, I'm in agreement. Roman Reigns retains. Um. Now it's heel versus heel here, but. Th- I do believe that the crowd would probably lean towards Roman Reigns being cheered, given just how good he's been. I think there's, a, there's, there's that sign of respect. He's finally turned heel, which fans have been asking for forever. So I do believe the crowd, if they're forced to choose, are going to choose to cheer Roman Reigns. Uh, believe it or not, I mean, because Seth just is just inherently unlikable, and that's credit to him as a heel. But uh, you're, I think the graphic is definitely something to, to uh, look into, and I think that, that does help your case of Roman Reigns retaining but also, like you just said, the biggest point to me is that Roman Reigns has done such a good job since August of 2020, since he returned as a heel, that having him not going to WrestleMania as champion, I think it would be a crime. I mean, you, you're, you're a couple of months away now. Why would you not want to have your hottest thing going in the last two years going into WrestleMania as champion? It doesn't really make sense to me. And, uh, you know, th- there are – I think there's a case to be made to have him retain at WrestleMania and go to next year's WrestleMania as champion. I mean, th- th- I, that would piss some people off, but I think that there's a case to be made for that. So I, I just don't see a, a way in, in which Seth Rollins wins. Now, is it a lock? No, I don't think it's a lock. But they had to fill this rumble with somebody of – of stature, somebody that is is a big star that they haven't had face Roman Reigns yet, and they looked around the SmackDown roster and said, "Hmm, 
yeah, we, we've pretty much exhausted everybody, and we don't want to do a repeat rivalry. So let's pull somebody from Raw and, and violate our brand rules and not tell the fans why it's happening. And that's what they did. They just looked around, and they're like, all right, let's just look at the entire roster. And they pulled from uh, Raw, which, like you said, I don't like they, that they went to this this early. And yes, we've seen them fight so many times, but it feels it does feel new because there's so di- so many so much has happened since they're then. They're completely different. They're now. like they're yeah, just... it's like Brock and Roman. Like yeah. they both feel that yes, we've seen them at WrestleMania multiple times and at other big events, but yet it still feels different because they're in such different places. And same with Seth and Roman. And so I I, I think this match is going to be excellent. I I'm, I think it's yes. going to be. I mean, it could be you know four out of five stars. Like it, it could be really really good, and I do think it will be. There's no reason not to. But at the end of the day, I think Roman Reigns does retain. I think it is going to be clean that he beats Rollins because they have something bigger for Roman. Uh, it's going to be a very close fight. It's going to be a lot of near falls, probably a kick out of the stomp. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But I, I expect Roman Reigns to retain. And like I said, clean. I don't think he's going to cheat to win. Do you see any kind of hocus pocus going on in this match? No, I kind of view this match as being pretty cut for like the Big E match with Roman and uh, Roman and Big E. I feel like it's going to be a, a good, solid match. And, and Seth is going to look amazing. You know, like Seth. And, and that's the thing with Seth. Like he. He could be champion at any time, but just his character right now, just because of his in-ring work alone, right? But his character right now, just is, it's not there, and he, Roman isn't the champion for Seth to beat. But, yeah, like, it's – I think it, this is one of those things that they can kind of put on the back burner, too, though, and, and come back to. So part of me did think that they may go with, like, a, a screwy-type finish, but I think it's just going to be a, a solid one, two, three for Roman. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think it will be, and – yeah, I, I, the whole brand split thing. Like I, I've been ranting about that for for weeks now. That they just completely disrespect it. But uh, the, the the biggest crime beyond them violating their own brand rules and not even having the respect or dignity to explain to the fans why the hell it's happening, um, you know, is that they have gone to this match at a time where they could have saved it, like you said, for a WrestleMania main event. And um, yeah, that that is one thing. And you know, plus they're both heels. It's not the best matchup yeah. when you have two heels. Like it, it, it's just weird. It does force the audience to choose a side, and I think WWE is going to be listening closely to see who they decide out of these two heels that they decide to cheer for. Because you're forced to. I don't think with these two stars being as big as they are, fans are going to sit on their hands. I think it's going to be likely a Roman Reigns supported crowd, um, even though they're both heels. So, yeah, I, I expect Roman Reigns to retain in in a match that's going to be awesome. Like I, I'm really looking forward to it. So, um, all right. Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley. Let me take this one first. I think off the top here, I'm gonna I'm going with Bobby Lashley beating Brock Lesnar. I, I don't think Brock Brock Lesnar was ever meant to have this championship for long. Yes, he proposed a championship versus championship match for with Roman Reigns, and and people are saying oh, it could happen at WrestleMania. But here's the problem with that: if, if Brock Lesnar retains here and he goes to WrestleMania as champion. Yeah, we have a couple pay pay-per-views in between, but typically when you you win at the Rumble, you're going to hold it till WrestleMania. So, with Brock Lesnar retaining, say he does, he goes to WrestleMania to face Roman Reigns in a championship versus championship match. Well, what does that mean exactly? Are are we going to morph or or unite the championships? Are are we going to just only have one world champion or is it going to be like a a Chris Jericho situation where he's carrying around two belts for, you know, 6 months? I mean, I don't I I don't think they would want to do that because I think that it would it would kind of in a way say to the fans that the brand split is somewhat over um, and you know while it is already kind of over in a, in a lot of ways I mean they they tell us you know with the Survivor Series it's the only time that SmackDown and Raw go head to head and yet. They do it. They're doing it right now with Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. They do it at WrestleMania for special occasions. Like there's, there's a hundred examples. That's a, that's a bunch of nonsense. But I yeah, I love really quick to to, yeah, to cut you off on that point. But it's because the I forget the exact verbiage that Michael Cole said, but he had mentioned that Seth appearing was due to being oh, a Royal Rumble season, yeah. and, and that was why it was that's okay. Right. That's why we saw it. I'm just like, what the? Mm. Mm. That's right. Like what? <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because, okay, fine. They, they give, that is the lamest excuse of all time. Like, 
So wait a minute. Was, was that in the dra- was, was that mentioned in the draft rules, Michael? Did, did, did they say, <laughs> well, right. when Rumble season comes around, you know, anything goes. No one cares. You know, it's just any, anybody can come to, to our to our brand. Doesn't matter. Um, and it doesn't even yeah. make sense why they would. Like that's not what the Rumble is about. The Rumble isn't about any type of supremacy. It's about winning the Rumble to main event WrestleMania in a one on one match. Like there's no yeah. team about it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's bizarre. It's so weird. And, and to be honest, this Rumble season has felt really weird. Um, not to get off topic, just one quick thing. Like they haven't even really built the Royal Rumble matches themselves. No, it, I know. It's like they've ignored the Royal Rumble match. And everything has been about like you know uh, the birthday parties and you know edge mi- edge cutting edge and you know uh, all these other random things it's like uh, w- what did the uh, Alpha Academy do with uh, RK Bro? They did oh, like the an, spelling bee. Yeah, they did some spelling bee. Like all these yeah. like weird <laughs> things. I'm like, if you didn't know, you just stepped into this episode of Raw and you didn't know the the date of the episode, you'd be like, I don't know what this pay per view is building towards. You know what this raw oh, is? Yeah. But it's just so weird. I've never had a rumble season where they just ignore the match itself. But, well, and not only yeah. does it feel like we've gotten like a full like the the rumble by the the numbers or or you know that video that they always That's a play good as, video. like two or three. Yeah, and I you know I look forward to it, but they beat you over the head with it. You know, like because they normally start airing that like at least like three weeks off from the rumble. And then, like, of course, there's all the shows that they have now. But I, I always enjoy it because each year they add and they tweak it. It's the same concept, but it, they add, you know, more statistics or whatever. So I don't even feel like we've really gotten that a lot. You know, I feel like I, I mean, I, I may have missed it, but no. I just feel like it was more prominent in, in prior years than this year. Because that's a big thing that it's all about the numbers. Yes. Know? And it's a yes, they play it every year. And normally I complain, oh, it's the same. But no, this is a good video. Like, yeah. like you said, they update it with like Santina Morella. Uh, taking yeah. the Warlords uh, record for, for being eliminated <laughs> the fastest by Kane or uh, Austin winning three uh, Royal Rumbles. He still is the, the holder of that or Kane having the most eliminations until, of course, Roman Reigns ended up uh, taking over that record. I love how they update that. And yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's just like they're taking away the match that the pay per view is named after. It's just, it doesn't, it's so weird. Uh, and I should say premiere live event. It's not a pay-per-view anymore. Um, but oh, yes. yeah, yes. which that language is going to take a long time to get out of me. Like pay-per-view just slides off the tongue. But um, so, yeah, speaking of video packages with Brock and Bobby going back to the match here, oh, I actually gosh. think that the video package that they showed last week on Raw was better to build this program than they have been building it for when they've even been face to face. Like the, if they just showed me that video package, that's all I'd need to want to see this match. I mean, because I don't like the way that they've done these face to faces and it's not Bobby's fault. It's the way that Brock Lesnar's character has been portrayed where he's pretending not to know who Bobby is in kind of a heelish way saying, Bobby, who you're a Brock Lesnar wannabe. Why, why are they taking this approach? Like it's to me, if you're going to build this, it's so stupid. And I, I'm a yeah. Brock Lesnar fan, but I don't like this because not only is it, yeah, it's, it, it, Brock's a baby face and he's acting heelish. So there's always oh, he turning heel and Bobby's baby face. That's a separate conversation. To me, it's the, the, the bigger picture is this is taking away from the importance of the match. You're taking away why fans should be invested. If one of the competitors is acting just arrogant and acting and pretending not to know who the other competitor is, how is that better than him taking it seriously and getting in the face of Bobby saying that I've waited 20 years for this and all that? Like why it's the worst approach you could possibly have for Brock Lesnar. Yeah. And, and, it, this is one of those matches where they literally didn't even have to do the most. They could have just done the very least. They could have had one or two face-to-face interactions. And I, I, I was, I was actually very excited to see them face-to-face for that first promo segment that they had to see what they were going to say and to see that it was actually going to be Bobby and Brock talking and not just MVP and Heyman for them to see them actually talking in this version of Brock just being more vocal. Like I was super excited for it. And, and, I hated that segment from Brock's point of view because, or from Brock's standpoint, because like you just said, he completely downplayed. And again, I I get it. Right. Especially from Lesnar, you know, like his whole thing is he's very to himself. He he doesn't know the rules. And and I guess I, I should say too, like to his credit or maybe to his defense, like he has played his character as, as not really being in touch with anything. He literally just shows up, does what Heyman tells him to do tries to win the championship most of the time he does and then goes back home to wherever home is at the time whether he's here or in canada you know so in in, because i thought back like the perfect thing is the money in the bank when he won the briefcase he didn't realize that he had a a whole year to cash it in 
Well, that's one of the most base, like, that's like bullet point number one, (laughs) you know, like you had your time frame to cash it in and, and just the whole, I don't know. So like, I get it coming from Lesnar, but you could have just very well had Lashley gone out there and started off the promo and and really dominated the conversation and, and played up the hype to it. And then just had Lesnar say one or two words, you know, like, and have Lesnar just kind of like embrace his, his silence, you know, like go back to that for one night, you know, just kind of go back to that old version of Brock. But I don't know, like I, I didn't hate, I don't hate this version of Brock and like, but it was just something about that promo that just really kind of turned me off. And I don't know. Like, I just feel like they literally like they didn't really have to do much at all. Like this match sells itself. And and like you said, like the, the video package that they put together, like the, you don't even have to watch Raw. Like you don't just their video packages alone will catch you up and, and are probably better than a lot of the content. You know, I hate to say it, but it's it's amazing. Dude. But this match itself is, is going to be so, so trying to sense myself so brutal. You know, like I do you think they're going to get like. 10 plus minutes or do you think it's going to be like a quick blowout match or how long do you th- think they're actually going to go though probably 10 12 minutes uh, i mean do I, you? Okay. I i would say not much more than 10 like i mean this is going to be a 20 minute classic between you know ricky steamboat and you know like it it, it and, and rick flair like this is going to be a a hard hitting in your face smash mouth power move for power move match and that's what this needs to be this doesn't need to be arm bar takeover you know headlock you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, this is going to be a very hard, and it should be. This, this is going to be a fight. And I, I would actually, I'm going to be looking closely to see if there's any little real elements here. And not that they have yeah. any real animosity for one another, but they have been paralleling each other's careers. Although, obviously, Bob or Brock Lesnar has been a much bigger star and had more success. But their, their, their body types, their, uh, what they've done, both have been in MMA. I, I think that I'm just going to be looking for some real elements here of actual re- amateur wrestling and a, maybe a little UFC. You know, like I'm 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 watching this because there is some actual competitiveness, I believe, between both, especially on Bobby's side. So I, I, I'm i that's what I'm really interested in, too. And and also Paul Heyman, does he show up? Does he accidentally screw over uh, uh, Brock Lesnar and making it look like an accident? But we'll eventually learn that it wasn't, you know, so. I think that that's a he's the wild card too. Does Paul Heyman accidentally screw uh, Brock? Where maybe he throws a chair in the ring and it was meant for Brock, and Bobby takes it and gets the victory. Like, so I think that's a possibility as well. Because do you think that? Well, first of all, did who did you pick? <laughs> did you pick Lashley? Lashley. I don't, okay. I don't know if I made it official yet. Lashley. Okay. So we both think that Lashley's going to get the victory here. Do you think it's going to be a clean victory, or do you think there is some accidental uh, – is it it's something accidental on Paul Heyman's part? How do you think that that goes down? Stay right there. The WWE Podcast will return after this quick break. Have you searched for yourself online lately? What did you find? The last thing you need is your home address and phone number readily available on the web to stalkers, debt collectors, and Karens. You need privacy pros. Privacy Pros works by pairing you one-on-one with a data specialist, monitoring over 160 sites, removing your information, and sending quarterly reports. Let Privacy Pros get their hands dirty so you don't have to. Visit privacypros.com slash wrestling. That's privacypros.com slash wrestling for more information. Start this new year off clean with Privacy Pros, the premier professional opt-out services. So we know you love your wrestling podcasts, but maybe you're looking to take a break or supplement your wrestling podcasts with another genre. I've got a great option for you. The podcast is called Philip and Michael Talk Movies. Doesn't get more simple than that, right? So what exactly is this? It's a comedy podcast where indie pro wrestler Philip Shadburn and filmmaker Michael Benton, they tell you everything you ever wanted to know about your favorite movies. They do 80s action, comedies, horror, slasher movies, sci-fi, and a whole bunch more stuff. So check out some of the movies that they've reviewed. Silent Night, Jingle All the Way. They did a, a bit of a Christmas special. They did Edward Scissorhands, Alien, John Carpenter's E.T., Fire in the Sky, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and Arrival. So, guys, this is a podcast you're going to love. I was listening to just their latest couple of episodes on Close Encounters and Arrival. It, I was laughing out loud. I mean, they are just such a dynamic duo. They have a great chemistry. The audio is second to none. They have a 4.9 rating on Apple Podcasts. That's impossible. 
I mean, that is impossible. Guys, we have like a 4.1, all right? They're kicking our ass. Uh, they've got a 4.9 rating on Apple Podcast. It's nearly impossible to do. So that tells you the quality of this podcast. And if you want to just get away, you're a movie aficionado and you love kind of 80s and slashers and things, check out Philip and Michael Talk Movies. They also have a Patreon uh, page if you're interested at patreon.com slash PMTM. So you can go support them there. Of course, they're available nearly everywhere you have podcasts as well. So check out Philip and Michael Talk Movies. Welcome back to the WWE Podcast. Let's get back to more great wrestling audio. So... It, part of me, I don't know why, but my first thought, it, once I realized, once they officially like made this match official, um, was wondering if they were going to go the Brock and Goldberg route and, and have uh, Lashley just like demolish him within like what was it like 30 seconds, a minute, some some crazy like that, just and just have it be over with just pretty quickly, just to kind of because to me with how how much they've been like crapping on Lashley and how much Brock has put Lashley down. Like part of me, like, and I, I feel like, I mean, I guess any way he wins, as long as he gets the title, like that's his redemption, I guess. But I don't know, like that just like really stood out to me, but I don't think Heyman does anything funny here. I think of course, and like, I think it's a given that Heyman is going to be with Lesnar um, at ringside, but I don't think, I think he'll interfere at some point. But I don't think, or he'll maybe try to play off of MVP or, or try to retaliate to something that MVP was trying to do. But I don't think it's it's going to be something where Heyman costs Lesnar or, or it, it negatively impacts Lesnar. I think they're going to be solid coming out of here. But I don't really know. Like I, that's one of those things about about this match. Like I feel like it's pretty. I don't. Maybe I shouldn't say it's certain because there's always there's no real certainty I should say with Lesnar, but. I feel pretty confident that Lashley's going to win. I just have no idea how. Yeah, there's that's what I'm saying. Like this match, this is this is also difficult while Bobby Lashley is the favorite. I I could see a scenario in which Brock Lesnar retains. I mean, yeah, I think he could retain. I mean, there's it's it's not impossible and it's not illogical to think that Brock Lesnar wins the match and goes to WrestleMania as champion. You know, I think that's that's a strong possibility. Why not? You know, Brock Lesnar is Brock freaking Lesnar. So there's there's a case to be made for Brock. But again, I think Bobby winning it, getting him the championship, even though we just kind of saw him lo- uh, lose it, feels like. But that's fine. You know, Bobby Lashley going into uh, WrestleMania as champion is uh, absolutely totally deserving on his end. So, all right, Bobby Lashley wins. Now let's get to, I think that's the end of the... Uh, I think that's the end of the actual matches. Now, again, maybe on SmackDown with Sonya Deville and Naomi, perhaps there's a screwy finish there where Naomi still doesn't get her hands on Sonya after literally like five months now, guys. Um, but maybe there's... At least I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that is a whole thing that I, I've defended that whole storyline because I'm a big fan of building heat and building heat and building heat, and she hasn't been able to get her hand, yeah. not even a finger, on Sonya Deville. But it, it, it's doing two things poorly right now. Number one, it's... Fans' patience is running out, and 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 even mine. Like I, I'm ready for this match to happen now. Like it's been long enough. And number two, I think it's making Naomi look just flat out weak because she has not done the first thing she should have done, which is go to upper management. Like she has a boss. Why are you allowing Sonya Deville to slap you? She's your boss to slap you in your in her office to abuse her power on a weekly basis. Uh, to uh, f- verbally abuse you on air. Like, sh- why? And then she has the same reaction. She just gives the, the big old, the mean girl look. It's like, no, no, like, can, can you actually do something? And then Sonya Deville takes off her jacket last week, and I'm like, oh, she's going to get, get a couple shots in. And she just goes, she just walks in and gives her the mean look, like, oh, well, you know, you took your jacket off, and you said, like, I'm like, take her down. What and are you she waiting even do for? It? I know, you, I know. You, 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 you look like such I a was coward. Doorway. Uh, it, it's oh my god! Like, what was the point? Yeah, it, it's she's at the same she's been at the same level of anger for like five months. She hasn't gone up. <laughs> she hasn't found a snapping point. It's just she takes this abuse on a weekly basis, and she's like, oh, I'll, I'll get you, girl. And it's like, no, that that was like week one. Why are we still in that same mode in five months later? 
it it's just it's it's maddening at this point now for me. So yeah. um, I mean, why she hasn't gone to the board of directors or Vince, who's floating around and mumbling to Austin Theory every week? <laughs> why she hasn't done something? And it's just infuriating to me, and it's making her look stupid as a character. It's making mm-hmm. her look weak. She's it looks like she's cowardly at times, and it, I I don't know. So um, hopefully that this match gets done on SmackDown, but if it doesn't, I could see the board of directors finally saying, you got to go into, you you must face Naomi one-on-one or you'll be fired. Like, she'll have to be back into a corner. Anyway, my rant is over on that. Um, let's get into the Rumble match. My God. Um, let's talk about the Men's Royal Rumble match first because I think it directly is affected by the winners here of the uh, championship match, uh, the, especially the WWE championship match. And I'm just going to give my quick pick uh, and then we, we can get into different possibilities, and I'll, I'll allow you to talk. I think Brock Lesnar wins the Men's Royal Rumble. And I know we just talked about him in the championship match, but I think he loses, enters the Rumble, wins the Rumble, and then chooses to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I'll leave it there. What are your thoughts? So my my thoughts on your pick or my thoughts on who's going to win? Well, everything. So long story short, I th- Oh, I, I don't see Brock Lesnar winning. Um, I, I do. I don't even see him in the match, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't see him entering the match at all. So I, I don't see Brock winning. I'm going to go Big E. Ooh. Winning the Rumble. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and so he'd face Bobby Lashley, <laughs> assuming. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. why. Yeah. So Lashley beats Lesnar. Uh, Biggie wins the Rumble, and because I feel like I feel like Roman is set. I feel like Brock and Roman is set. Like Brock doesn't need to win, and I I totally get where you're coming from because I mean it's Brock Lesnar, you know, and he he was the guy who entered as the Rumble match as the champion and everything, so it, it makes sense. But I think Brock is is also that guy who can literally just show up next Friday on SmackDown and be like, I never got my my match against you, you know, because of the whole day one thing, and then they can just try to kind of drag that out. And again, if they're gonna, if the whole focal point is gonna be that match at Mania, you can maybe have Lesnar sit out sometime until it's it's proper Mania season, and you know you have X amount of weeks left, um, since we're still kind of far out from now, but. Yeah, I just, I just for whatever reason to me, I just I feel like it's going to be a simple thing with Lesnar losing the title. He's going to maybe disappear for however long, and then he's going to just show back up. And not saying that's necessarily what I want, but that's kind of what I feel right now. Um, and again, I, maybe not completely disappearing after uh, tomorrow, but maybe showing up, you know, for a, another week or two and then disappearing or whatever. But I don't know. Like I just, I just I don't see Lesnar winning here because I, I I feel like this. This year in particular, the Rumble match needs to go to someone who who needs it, and I think the Raw show itself and the Raw championship needs it more than SmackDown does. So that's like the the main reason I think too that kind of plays into it. But yeah, I feel like I feel like Lashley needs a a a, a good opponent, and maybe I'm crazy for for thinking they're gonna go Big E, but because they may try to put Edge in, in the title match or whatever, but. Yeah, I, I for whatever reason I just feel like they're gonna go Big E, and I feel like it'd be cool. I feel like it'd be cool to see him get a, a Rumble victory, even if he doesn't end up winning at WrestleMania. You know, I feel like I don't know. I just feel like it'd be cool. It'd be a good moment for him to win. It kind of be like a Drew McIntyre type thing. Yeah, or reaction. What about Drew? I mean, like they're, they're, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or hey, Johnny Knoxville. I mean, there's there's your odds on favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. God, I hate that. I, I just I can't stand when they do the bring in people that don't deserve it i mean it's just i know it's just a big it's one big infomercial for jackass forever i understand that but just anyway what'll be really sad about that is he will probably eliminate a couple of people uh when oh, you know, that, that's gonna be the worst part of it and, and it's it's like vince is 20 years late to the party here like jackass was cool 20 years ago like when i was in high school you know people like it was like oh I mean, you see those idiots in shopping carts trying to you know like it was like cool for like you know a, a short period of time and now you're bringing back this old man who used to do these uh, these uh, <laughs> self-harming actions and now now we're supposed to feel that it, oh wow vince is vince is up to date he's got his finger on the pulse of the, like come on um, I didn't, yeah, I will say I didn't even realize Jackass was still around until he either. showed up on on. I had I legit had no idea. <laughs> so they they did yeah. they did like I guess I mean I'm not gonna watch it still, but I mean they did like clue I don't know I don't know. But see that's the thing too like 
And it's completely different, a completely different audience, I feel like, nowadays, especially. Well, he brought in Bad Bunny, and I, I did really, last year, I never heard of Bad Bunny until they brought him in. True, yeah. Never, <laughs> ever, ever, never ever. And I really don't think we'll ever see a celebrity appearance that outperforms like Bad Bunny did, ever. Oh, I mean, no, I he was amazing. I hated him as a character, but damn, he put his work in, and, and yes. credit to him. Um, but uh, Johnny Knoxville's probably sitting there, you know, uh, sitting there with like a car battery hooked up to his, you know, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, he's he's probably <laughs> not training at all. I mean, like he, he, outside of maybe getting the basics in at, at the performance center or something, he's probably not really putting too much work into this. And I hope it doesn't lead to some WrestleMania match. I'm really hoping it doesn't. And, and they, oh, you know, I, the problem is I can see it happening where they feel like, yeah. you know, what they did with Bad Bunny work last year from Rumble to Mania. I don't know. So anyway, back to reality. Th- this is going to be this. This match is going to be fun. And, and the reason I also think Brock is going to be a part of this is that it would be later in the night because I think they're going to get the championship matches out run done right away. And the men's match will be done at the other end of the pay-per-view. So I don't think fans would be as angry if Brock Lesnar shows up again, even because it would be a couple of hours before they see him again. Uh, so that's the way I think they'll structure it. But also because Brock Lesnar could have some really cool moments with like people like Omos, like, you know, because Omos is going to come in at a point when the ring has like 15 people in it and he's going to be the one to come in and just start tossing bodies over the ropes. And imagine if he clears everybody out and then you hear Brock Lesnar's music. And, and he comes down to the ring and faces Omas, right? Like moments like that where it's not a match with these two. And I don't want to see them in a match yet because I think Omas is not quite ready. But that visual of Omas and Brock Lesnar standing, you know, face to face would be really cool. Um, you know, Brock, also Drew McIntyre, if he's a part of it, there's some history there. So yeah. while Brock, you know, if he enters, he may, I, mean, I think he's going to win. But if he doesn't, at least you have those moments, too. And WWE is all about the moments. So. That's another thing I think that they'd be missing out on if Brock didn't re-enter the, uh, or put himself into the Rumble. Plus, all you have to do is declare it. I mean, so all he has to do is just like maybe tweet it out, say, I declare I'm in the Rumble and you're in. It also begs the question, why wouldn't the Rumble already be set with 30 p- uh, participants prior to the match actually happening? Do, do they just hope somebody fills the last spot or two? I mean, it's, you know, I don't know. Um, but the one thing I'll say, whoever wins the Rumble for the men and women, I'm going to put out a challenge to them. The challenge is do not point at any signs when you win. Just say stand <laughs> there. Just stand there, and you can pose for the, the hard cam. You can oh, do your man. thing. Do anything but point at the WrestleMania sign. I'm, I'm putting out that challenge. I, 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 you know, just To me, that's I know it's a small thing, but it's just, it, it just when I see that every year, it's a reminder of what I'm watching is not particularly real. You know what I mean? Do you think, yeah, do you think that they would get in trouble? Like, let's just say Brock wins. We'll go with him. Do you think that, well, first of all, like, I don't even, I can't even picture, I mean, maybe Brock pointing to the sign, oh, God, but please. maybe, maybe Brock isn't a good one. Let's say Biggie. We'll go Biggie because Biggie, you know, it's Biggie. Do you think if he didn't point to the sign, like, let's just say he, he just refused to point to the sign, do you think he would actually get in trouble for that? I think he'd be, like, Vince would probably rip him a new one, but I don't think he'd be fined or suspended or anything, but he'd be yeah. like reamed out. Like, what are you doing, man? Man, like you yeah. know, you could hear it backstage where he, you know, cuss every, you know, for every yeah, every yeah. other word. And, and again, what? It, hopefully, if he does that, they can put subtitles under him because I don't know what Vince says half the time. I've said that like I have no clue what Vince is saying anymore. He's yeah. just this old man mumbling at this point. He's it's like, really sad. Blah, 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 it's, blah, 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 blah. Like I mean, like yeah. every four words I get, I'm like, I think he said this word. Like Vince, yeah. enunciate your words. What the hell's going on? I mean, it's just he's getting old. That's all. Um, yeah. But uh, so that's my challenge to to, to those out there. I I, I will uh, forever respect those that do not point at the sign because it's it's, it's an exposure of the business. It's, that's the most right. that's the biggest reason I don't like it because it's like a corporate mandate and I can't stand it. Um, but I, I I know I'm probably wrong. But if Brock Lesnar did it, I don't think anyone would say anything. Like if Brock Lesnar wins and he's like, you know what, f this, I'm gonna stay. I'm not pointing to the sign. I, I don't think anybody would say anything to him because it's Brock Lesnar. So, no. yeah. um, all right. Well, so I'm going with Brock. You're going with Big E. So, what, and there are other participants as well. What about Drew McIntyre being a repeat winner? I mean, Drew McIntyre is possible. Um, can you yeah. think of anybody else out there? Like, I mean, Dark Horse is like a Finn Balor winning. I thought it was like I mean, an AJ Styles. AJ Styles, I've heard. Yeah. Could you see anything, any like anybody like that or any 
massive returns that could possibly win this? John Cena, I've heard floating around a couple of times. Any possibility of anyone like that? No, and and that's the thing. Like, in that, it's it's a weird thing. This, especially the men's match. Like, I'm not, like, I'm I'm still I'm still looking forward to it, and I'm still kind of excited to watch it. But it's not like anyone is like I'm like grabbing at anyone in particular to to win this thing. Cause and like and that's what's hard with kind of making like a prediction. It's like I don't feel like there's one or even two like obvious ones. Maybe maybe you know maybe Brock should be one, and maybe I'm just like completely off. But like. I think there's just so many people who, like, to be honest, like, I really, like, in previous years wouldn't see winning. But, like, at this point, like, and, and that's why I feel like they have to have someone win for the the Raw side because, like, I don't know what else they would do, you know, if if, if it went to SmackDown. So that's why I was kind of leaning that way. But I don't know. Like, part of me, like I was saying earlier, wouldn't necessarily be shocked if Randy Orton won. Even I think this would be his, what, third or, or maybe even fourth uh, Royal Rumble win the match itself. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if they would want to pull the trigger on that yet, but with it being his hometown, like I like, it's kind of like a perfect storm, you know, I could kind of see it and they, I don't know, like I could si- kind of see them going to Lashley or in route. Um, yeah, I don't know though. I don't, to me, like, I don't think there's anyone else obvious, but like, I feel like if, if they're set on Brock and Roman and they feel like they may need help, maybe getting an opponent set up for Lashley or, or the raw side, Maybe that's why they go with like a, a big E or maybe an edge. Maybe edge enters the rumble and maybe he wins again, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't see anyone else obvious. This is, this is really tough. Uh, this, this men's Royal Rumble match is really difficult. And we were, we're honestly, we're both probably wrong. I mean, there's somebody maybe yeah. that they're, they're also thinking of that we're not. And, um, you know, that's completely obvious. Also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're going to come out and go, oh, duh, right? Like, and you're going to, we're both going to feel stupid. Uh, yeah. It's just the way it goes. And the Rumble match, it, it's so much fun, though. But I would also challenge WWE to not allow eliminated uh, competitors to oh. eliminate people that are still in the match. Well, I mean, it doesn't even make sense. Like, okay, the person who was eliminated gets angry and they throw the other person off the top rope. How is that a legal elimination, though? That person is right. like, it's a spectator at that point. I mean, is the rule just if they fall? I mean, I guess I'd, I would understand it if the rule was that no matter how that person falls over the top rope, if their body ends up over the top rope to the floor, they're eliminated. If that's not a part of the rules, then how can somebody who's eliminated eliminate somebody that's a, still an active competitor? But we're going to see it. I can guarantee you that. Uh, and if that's the yeah. case, then like if, if I'm like a, a Becky Lynch, for instance, and and I'm not well, maybe let me stick with the men. If I'm like a Roman Reigns and I see that Brock has entered into the Rumble, then I'm going to send the Usos out there to eliminate him, regardless if they're in the match or not. You know, because whatever, as long as he's thrown over the top rope, he's eliminated and I don't have to worry about Brock at the at, at WrestleMania. So it's like it just doesn't make sense. Like <laughs> if that were the case, you know, like it, it's just one of those things like you love the Rumble match, but there's so many things where it just, it's just like common sense is just not there. You just kind of have to ignore a yeah, lot. Yeah, that's one. And the other one is, to me, uh, how can you not have an X amount of, X amount of time to get into the ring or you're you're eliminated, right? Because yes, if, if, yes. otherwise you could just hang out ringside and just sit, you know, <laughs> sit at the announce desk and wait for it to get down to the last person, and then you go, okay, well all I have yeah. to do is get into the ring. And then the other thing is, there, there's so many things. The other thing is, if I hear from anybody that they defeated 29 other men, that they they eliminated oh. 29. No, you didn't. You did not do that. Unless you are number one and you yourself eliminate those 29 other men, that is a false statement. And you hear it all the time, and it's just I, – I, I don't buy what they're selling. I know that I get the the message they're sending because they're so good at sending messages. I get it. But, I, I like, it, I hear it so much, and you hear it even from the women. I'm going to defeat 20 – I'm going to throw 29 other women over the top. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not doing that. You could win the Rumble. You're not doing that. Um, it's or just say so you you outlasted 29 other fine. individuals. That's fine. You outlasted that. If if anything, if you have to throw that 29 number out there, then say you outlasted or yeah. something to that effect. Totally you know, fine. Like you said, you you did not eliminate them. No, you didn't. <laughs> you didn't eliminate all 29. What if you, you co- what if you're on entrant What if you're entrant number 30 and there's two people left in the ring? Are you going to say you you eliminated 20? No, you didn't. Right. It's just it's it's infuriating, but they don't they're just not self aware or they just don't care about the the details of that. I do because I hear it every year. And it's it's so it's like no you didn't at all but okay um so let's get to the fun one here and 
let's let's talk about the women's rumble. I'm going to let you take this because I think we're going to have the same. I think we're going to have the same prediction along with the rest Ooh. of the internet. Um, uh, maybe not. You know. May, maybe you don't, and you're not going with double R here. But let me know what you think. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I and I'm probably going to feel so foolish as I watch <laughs> the rumble and and it happens. Um, for whatever. I mean. So I'm still even struggling on if I think if Rousey's going to come back, right? I'm I'm still because it just it, it, unless I was under some special type of rock, did it just recently like this week start like sparking up that Ronda was going to come back, or has this been like a thing for weeks now and I've just been missing it? It was like I feel yeah. like it just came out of nowhere this week. It exploded this week, but it existed a couple of weeks ago, so it really okay. took hold this week. Yeah. But like I don't was there like a, a video clip that she released or like an article like I just feel like I don't know like I I don't know I so I'm just gonna say it, I'm gonna stick with I don't think she's returning and I could be completely foolish and I would be okay with that um but in the next time we do a show I will completely like admit I was completely wrong but I I, I don't think that, that Ronda's gonna return you know I feel like at least at the wow. Rumble okay I don't think she's gonna return um. And as I'm saying that, I'm like, I, like part of me is like, don't be stupid. Of course, she's going to come back, um, especially with Becky tweeting about it. You know, as I'm saying it, see, you're talking yourself like, out I'm of talking, it. I am, I am. <laughs> but so, OK, like she may come back. OK, fine. She may come back tomorrow. And, and trust me, like I'm a big, big Ronda Rousey fan. Like I would love to see her back. But at the same token, like I I don't want her to win. Like if she does come back, like. That's fine, but like I don't want her to win. I want someone to eliminate her. I just I'd something screw it. like I mean I guess it can't really be too screwy, but you know something, something to that effect. Or she just gets blindsided and gets pissed off. Like I don't know, but I see it being Bailey. I wow. feel like Bailey is gonna make her her triumphant return here. She's been doing a lot lately. She was just at the football game in Dallas. Like she's been doing a lot of like media stuff. Maybe not necessarily like interviews, but like she's been doing a lot of like pop up things. And she's been like active a lot on tw- uh like Twitter and stuff. So I just feel like it's it's Bailey. I feel like Bailey is gonna return. She may be the one to eliminate Charlotte from the Rumble match and then end up winning the thing, kind of like a Drew McIntyre type thing. Um, eliminates Charlotte, wins the Rumble, and then she goes on to face Charlotte at Mania. That that's kind of where I'm going. Wow. All right. Yeah. No. I, <laughs> I, I, Bailey's on my radar, but I I don't think she's ready or back for fully from injury. I, I know I've seen videos of her, and she seems a lot more mobile. I don't think she's returning at the Rumble. I think Bailey's coming back probably sometime in like February, maybe at the Elimination Chamber or WrestleMania Chamber, whatever stupid name they're going to come up with in uh, oh Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Um, but th- that's my thought. I don't think Bailey's returning yet. I do think she'll make it in time for WrestleMania season. Now, Ronda Rousey. Um, first of all, I-, I still view her as a heel. Like I didn't forget how ob- obnoxious, obnoxious that she is as a human being, especially towards the end of her WrestleMania 35 run. And then all the stuff she said on social media afterwards about, you know, exposing the business, whether that was real or not, I didn't like it. Uh, all this, she did a bunch of crap on social media afterwards, like trolling the fans about being marks for wrestling. Like she, it felt like she just because she knew a few insider words that it was she, kind she of insulting. was insulting. Yeah, she is. I, I don't care if it's a like she, if that truly is all the work. I don't care. I don't like it. I'm taking it for yeah. this, this. You're just a you're you're just a, a, a really a self obsessed human being. I mean, she is a narcissist to the core. She just is. Now, now that said. I think that that would make an excellent heel. I think Ronda Rousey as a heel is way better than Ronda Rousey as a babyface, and I, th- I think it would be. Now, I don't think the crowd would react that way because in person they're going to look at this and go, "Whoa, we're in person for a Ronda Rousey return! Yay, let's cheer for her." So I don't. I think that any of the bad feelings they had for her probably go away if they hear that buzzer and you see Ronda Rousey come out. They're just going to cheer because they're in person. It's exciting. It's a big star. So I think I do think Ronda Rousey returns. Sorry, guys, this is not an interesting prediction, but I do think she wins the thing because it sets up the nice Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch 
return match, and hopefully this time it's one-on-one. We don't get a Charlotte third wheel this time. Uh, return to that uh, one-on-one format. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> they just have oh, oh no gosh. no 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 like she, no they're on separate brands now so now there's no excuse although I shouldn't say but that. But she's the SmackDown champion again like it just plays perfectly. Oh god like, yeah yeah it does. It she's lineup, too champion. But, um, it was just Ronda was the women's champion going forward. Oh <laughs> my god in. yeah just yeah no please. It was the same thing. <laughs> please don't even don't put that out in the universe. Oh, that would. That would, that would be hilarious just for the outrage alone. Yeah. I, you know what? I, as as outrageous as that is, I could see it in the realm of possibility of yeah. like, you guys, you guys imagine how awesome was that match the last time? Imagine if we did it again. You know, you can hear that crap. Uh, th- th- I don't think they have the, the brass to do it because Charlotte is doing an excellent job on SmackDown. I think she's got her own story going, probably with Alexa Bliss, who I think is going to be a part of the Royal Rumble. Um, I think Alexa Bliss is returning at the Royal Rumble. Um, I, I do see that as well. I think that she's going to be involved with Alexa at uh, at WrestleMania, and then Ronda and Becky are one on one at WrestleMania. So, you know, beyond that, I mean, you you do have your odds on favorite favorite of the legend Summer Rae. So, you, you know, you, you you do have that. I know that I'm I'm, not, I'm you know, that's the elephant in the room. Uh, how so, can, I'm how I'm so remiss of myself. How can I forget? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just she's such a big star that she clouds your mind. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, I mean you talk about the Hall of Fame and you talk about the Mount Mount Rushmore of specifically women's wrestling. I mean that's that's who you think of. She's it's, number one. I, I mean, mean it, she's the first one. It's not even debatable. Like Summer Rae is horse just two? no. God, it's it's yeah. Summer Rae and then um, and then or, or maybe the Bella Twins. Like you know they're they're yeah. also up there. Um, and sadly, they're a part of the Rumble. I, I know there's some Bella Twins fans out there. I'm not one. Okay, Bella Twins. I, I know that they were actually they actually wrestled where in in, a, in an era where it was still sexualizing women. I get that, but in general, WWE had to pull from the well of yesteryear to get into uh, to get to that magic 30 number. I don't even know if they're still going to get to that 30. Uh, I would imagine they do, but they really have to struggle every year. They have to bring in Lita, which maybe she'll face Charlotte at WrestleMania. That's that's still on the table. You know, they're bringing in Lita. They're bringing in Molly, or not Molly Holly. They're bringing in Mickey James. Uh, you know, so they're bringing in people that they have to really. They're, they're trying to meet that 30 number, which again, they're exposing their own lack of depth in the women's division by having to pull from, you know, pull like 10 people that from. That they did to themselves. Yeah, it, it's really. I mean, it's almost insulting to the women's division that. They don't have enough women to get to that 30 number. And, um, you know, I, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to put them on equal footing with the men, which is totally fine. But then make it legit. Don't don't try to fill it with these artificial slots of of uh, yesterday, you know, yesterday's stars that, you know, have zero chance of winning. It's, well, and, you know, yeah, so. and that needs to be year round, too. So if you can't just especially with the women's division, because you already don't have the depth before you went on your firing spree. Right. Like even putting like if you even if we go back in time, like a year from a year ago, like you you still like the women's division isn't going to have the depth that the women's or that the men's does. So you, you have to kind of whether you want to or not for for times like the Royal Rumble, when you need a specific amount of, of females, like it just shows like you, you just got it at yourself, you know, and it can't just be a focus one time a year because then you're, you're scrambling, you know, and it, it is, it is obvious, you know, like I don't, I was never under the whole forbidden door thing with WWE perspective. I viewed it as just like you said, like they, they were kind of, and I don't want to say desperate in the derogatory term for the talent because the talent that they got are, are, legends you know like your lead is in your mickey james you know like those those individuals but like it, it just it just shows a lot you know it, it shows a lot it, it does and when i looked at the numbers i i mean i came up with about a third a third of the entrance in the women's royal rumble are stars from like you know 10 years ago right they're not even mm-hmm. act, active weekly competitors they're people that have moved on uh, into that other won't be area. There the following yeah year. like a third a third, it, it may not be exactly 33%, but it's close. It's really close. I think it's like, it is about nearly 10 out of the 30. Are, are, 33. Yeah. I that mean, number. seriously. So that's the problem I have. And if you're in the women's division, you, you kind of have to look at this and say, what the hell? I mean, you know, how do you not have enough women to put into this rumble? Why, it may not, why not use it as an opportunity to introduce new stars? Yeah, they're not going to win. Bring him in from NXT. 
right? Like bring them in from even if they're trainees. It does. It's this is not a match that requires a ton of skill. All you have to do is learn how to get thrown right. over the top rope safely. You don't you don't have a whole lot of spotlight on you, but it's a great way to get introduced to the fans. So why not do it? Even with if you just started out in NXT or they have prospects or I mean like on a, I don't know. So. Instead, they go to the well and try to pull from, you know, the, the ruthless aggression star power era, which still was not a great uh, era for the women. It was it was heading in the right direction, but the women were still objectified to some degree. And the Divas Championship, as we all know, was a complete joke. So, you know, it, I don't know. Um, I, I just I, I, outside of this. OK, let me go circle back. I don't think there's a whole lot of possibility of anyone else winning other than Ronda Rousey. Uh, possibly Alexa Bliss. I mean, you, you do have Alexa Bliss out there. Shayna Baszler, I think, is a dark horse. Charlotte Flair is also a part of the Royal Rumble, don't forget, because mm-hmm. they, they have to add champions to the match because they don't have enough women. So even if you're you're competing that night, you're in the Rumble. Um, they have Michelle McCool, Kelly Kelly, uh, Brie Bella, Nikki, you know, so Aaliyah. Um, so there really aren't a whole lot of women that could potentially win this match. I, th- I think we pretty much covered it with Ronda Rousey uh, and uh, who's your pick again? Bailey. 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 Sorry. Yes, Bailey. Um, who isn't? Yeah, I don't believe she's ready to go, but you know, it, it's it's Maybe possible. It's wishful thinking. It's yeah. Probably wishful thinking. Yeah. Um. And, and actually, wait a minute. Uh. I just you know, I, I got a spoiler from uh from SmackDown. Unfortunately, I'm on Wikipedia because Wikipedia actually has this updated. Um. Oh. Dang. <laughs> they gave they gave two huge names. Entered into the Women's Royal Rumble, so oh. I, I I won't. Do you want me to tell you or not tell you? Yeah, uh, no, go for uh, it. Okay, so on SmackDown, it was just announced that both Sonya Deville and Sasha Banks are part of the Women's Royal Rumble. So, oh wow, uh, that yeah. You know, while I don't think think Sonya Deville is going to be a part of uh of the possible winners, Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks is uh, back in. See that that Ooh. might throw a wrench in things. <laughs> um, Ooh. Yeah, I think. Does that change your opinion? For, I'm gonna does. stick by my guns. I'm gonna still say Ronda Rousey, but that's a strong candidate. So. Ooh. And it's official. Sasha's back. That was on SmackDown. You it, said? It, it says right here, uh, January 28th today, okay. uh, announced on SmackDown that she's a okay. part of the Royal Rumble. So. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna. Is it, is it too late? Is it too no, late? No, no, because you just okay. learned this information. I mean, yeah. Okay. So. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I. So in in fear that Bailey may not be ready to come back. So all right, I guess I'll say it this way: if if Bailey is back, I'm gonna stick with that being my number one choice. But if Bailey's not here, then Sasha is gonna be my my pick. It yeah. So I, I, maybe yeah. that's cheating though. It, no, it's not. It's not because we we just found this. I mean, I just saw this. Sasha Banks, uh, and that's what I'll say too. I'm sticking with Ronda Rousey, but if Ronda Rousey isn't there, Sasha Banks is absolute. She's that right there. I mean, because Ronda Rousey could return the next night on Raw and just do the traditional way of challenging Becky Lynch for the championship. You don't have to go right. through the Rumble. There's always two ways to get to the main event. So I think Sasha Banks is a hell of a candidate to face Charlotte Flair Ooh, yeah. at WrestleMania one on one. And maybe Bailey gets involved, and there's some three-way. I have my my suspicions are that the women's matches at WrestleMania are not one-on-one. I I could foresee one, at least one of them, is a multi-person match. Like it's Bailey versus Sasha versus Charlotte. I could absolutely see that being yeah. the SmackDown women's main event. And and on Raw, it should be Ronda versus Becky. But maybe they throw that third person in. You know, maybe it's Bianca Belair. I think maybe they what they probably throw a Bianca Belair in there somewhere. I mean, don't yeah, forget, Bianca is yeah. a huge candidate, too, and they're, they're trying to make her into a potential multi, multi-time multi winner. Bianca is a hell of a candidate, too, um, but I don't think it's good, big of a star she is that she wins it. But uh, we could have two three-ways for the women's championship matches on both brands. I mean, yeah. I, I can see that happening. I, I Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm a big fan of one-on-one, but uh, I think there's a strong possibility. So, okay. Now, let's get to Forbidden Door. Uh, do you have any thoughts on if it's true, if it's true, who that could be? Do you, have you given it any thought? We've heard, I've heard John Moxley, I've heard Braun Strowman. Do you have any, or or do you not think it's going to happen? Do you think this is all just a bunch of nonsense? So I I 
don't I don't think it's gonna be anyone from be anyone from AEW. I'll, I'll start with that and just kind of eliminate all of them. I don't see that happening right now. Um, maybe in like a alternate alternate universe, I could see something crazy with like a Jericho showing up, but like I don't think, especially with him being in his storyline now, like maybe if he wasn't doing anything currently on on their TV show, like maybe, but. I don't know. I, I, I don't see anyone from AEW coming over at all. Um, I The only thing that I could see that may be kind of wild would be like a Matt Cardona coming back in his like Zack Ryder form oh, just for shit. the ironic part of it. Just because of like especially with him and like his GCW type like it, with Impact, he's more of like a good guy type. But GCW for sure, like he's like that obnoxious, like, you know, bad guy. Um, So like part of me just to kind of get more like you know quote heat so when he goes back on the indie scenes it's you know like i don't know like i could see him wanting to do that just to kind of play up on like on the outside um but i don't know like even with that like i would say maybe that's like maybe like a 10 15 percent chance that i would give that but outside of that no like i don't i don't really see anyone anyone shocking making a a return or even like a, a one night thing what about you i would love honestly like if, if i had my fantasy pick of who this could be now this person isn't going to win whoever this forbidden door person is is a one-off it, it, yeah. it's a one-off to get people talking to get eyeballs on the product to go oh my god wwe did what How, <laughs> they never do that. like it's all just to get the buzz it's it's controversial mm-hmm. that's all this is about so anybody that believes if, if there's a shocking crossover wrestler that's this forbidden door it's not going to be somebody that wins that said if I had my fantasy pick, it would be MJF. I mean, I would, to oh, me, my MJF and maybe the Miz is in the middle of the ring or something as part of the competitor. I was just going to say. Like, that to me, because MJF is constantly being compared to Miz, and he's always, ran, like, just hammering the Miz on social media. Like, I would love to see that, like, MJF come in the ring and do that. You know, that would be my that fantasy would be amazing. pick. MJF, oh, it, yes. I mean, God, the, the, just the, the reaction the crowd would have, I, I think, would be it would be otherworldly. And yes, the MJF is one of the best heels in, in the entire industry right now, but he would get a monster pop. Um, oh, yeah. And so that said, though, I don't think AEW would restrict it. I don't think their contracts are written the way WWE's contracts are for their talent. I think that they wouldn't do it out of respect for the company because the company is exactly what WWE isn't at not all the time, but that's what they're built on is they are, they're there because they don't want to deal with the way WWE does business, that they don't like the culture, that they are there for the, the exact reason that WWE exists. They're the anti WWE in some ways. Um, so I, I think that even an MJF who's a heel that goes there, I think a lot of talent view this as undermining what AEW was built on and why they exist to begin with. So exactly. yet that's the problem I have with AEW talent is that this is still a new company. And I think it would really hurt, especially from a fan's perspective. They would say, man, ah, like I, I have, I'm so loyal to AEW. And now, yeah, they're going over to WWE for a night, but it's, it makes me feel like I'm watching a, a, a fraudulent product. Like well, I, and it's like, why do they feel like it's important enough to go to a WWE show? You know what I mean? Exactly. There's no WWE talent going to an AEW it, show. It, you know, like, so why do they have to show up? That's exactly it. Yes, it, it, to me, it would go beyond heel heat. Like, MJF is already a heel, but I think it... Yes, he would get booed on the show, but it, it would dig deeper into a real level where fans yeah. of AEW and only AEW would look at it and go, you know, I, I've been supporting a fraudulent product. Like, that's how I think of of talent coming over as, as awesome as that would be if mj if mjf comes out i'm gonna mark out like i'm gonna I mean, oh dude in like a fantasy <laughs> world like you said oh my gosh yes mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. so the second his music hit would be just oh earth shattering. god and just to see what the crowd uh, it, it would yes. yeah see see i'm well, not uh, it's not gonna it. happen i, I no, i'd give it a 99 percent chance of it not happening and i was originally on board for moxley jericho or even mjf when i first heard him like oh I could see that happening. And then I just thought about it for like, you know, a, a, a few minutes. I'm like, nah, I don't think so because of what I just explained. So I, I, I would love, I would love it. I just don't see it for that reason. Um, but yeah. that said, who could that potential person be? Uh, oh boy. Well, it's gotta be somebody from another. Co- could it be Braun Strowman? I mean, Braun Strowman, wh- why not? I- isn't he an impact Braun Strowman? Who is, I, I think he was, I think he's an impact right now. 
Um, I think oh, if it's yes. not Impact, no Ring of Honor. I think he's in Ring of Honor. Um, yeah, because the uh, last thing I saw, and this was maybe over a month ago, was him and EC3 doing like a tag team thing, and or they had like a whole group or, or and I think they, it's vague, but I think they just like done like an invasion on some show or something. I don't even, I don't know, I don't remember the specifics, but I remember seeing like some clip. It was like him, EC3, and then I think maybe two other guys. Yeah, so. That, to but me, even like a one night thing, you know. Yep. So if there's going to be a promotion that fans aren't as ravenous towards and would would feel betrayed, so that that's there's the word I'm searching for, betrayal. I think there would be an element of betrayal for any AEW star to yeah. come over to WWE, right. even for a night. It, it'd be a betrayal on the fans or on the company's part towards the fans. That's the real risk there. Um, so a lot of people are choosing Moxley and Jericho and things, and again, very unlikely, no. but. If it's going to be a, Moxley is like the least. Yeah. While like, it'd be awesome. Especially right now. And oh, actually, for sure. Renee Young said that the fans minds would melt, quote unquote, the, the fans minds would melt. She said, obviously, she doesn't know, which is a bunch of nonsense. Of course she does. But she's yeah. not going to reveal anything. So no. I think it'd be it would be hilarious to see Moxley there. I, I would I, I would think it's in, I would love to hear what the crowd does. And if he's introduced as Moxley or if he's introduced as Dean Ambrose, like, I, I, I don't know. Um, because they've shown all these clips of Moxley on yeah. WWE uh, unapologetically, not trying to hide him. And they often hide people. They don't want to even remind you existed. Uh, so you know, even Seth mentioned Mox by name on Raw. Yeah. So yeah. Um, there, there's a case to be made, but I, I don't think at the end of the day it's going to be. I think it's going to be somebody like a Braun Strowman that comes in from a smaller promotion that the fans can go, eh, well, it's good exposure for, for the, you know, for, for, for our brand. You know, like I think fans would appreciate it, whereas fans of AEW look at AEW way different. So yeah. that's what I think. I think it's probably a Braun Strowman or somebody from Ring of Honor or Impact um, that it was previously a WWE star. That's what I think. Um, what do you you have? You you have an official uh, Forbidden Door pick uh, or possibilities or, or just like general statements about it? Because it's it's really no, I, you know yeah. Y- yeah, you know, I, I I'm gonna say no. I, I again, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I, I would love like there's like probably five that we could go on and on about <laughs> that I would love to see. But I, reality, like I don't, I don't see them doing anything outside of the box this year. And I hope I'm wrong. You know, like I, I'm, I'm, I so hope I'm wrong. But like maybe, maybe my choice, like my if there is one for whatever reason, I my my pick would be uh, Matt Cardona or Zack Ryder. Like I just, I feel like. Who he is right now, character wise, like it would just play up that so much. Um, mm-hmm. so I, I would just, I would for whatever reason, like I would just put like a little bit of money on him, yeah, just for a one night thing, and then and then be done, you know. But really quick, do could you possibly see the Fiend or any version mm. of Bray Wyatt, just for one night? I yeah, there, there, there's another name I didn't think about, or I, I I saw and I didn't really think about if it's real. <sighs> I just saying Braun Strowman made me think of. Okay. I, I don't think so because I think that I I don't think Bray Wyatt would want to himself or I, I forget his real name. I, I, I don't. Uh, yeah uh, yeah Wyndham isn't it his real name? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah yeah yeah. So um I I don't think that he would for his own mental health as he's still I guess. Trying, oh that's true. Yeah that's true. I, I think yeah. mentally he's checked out and I don't think he'd want to dive back into a place that. Again, we don't know the full story of why he left. We we still don't know all all the ins and outs. I I think that put him maybe back in a in a bad place. Maybe uh, you know I don't think it would happen because the fans would want to see him back on a regular basis, not just for a one off. Um, and, and it's, I don't think so. But uh, I mean, there may not be a forbidden door pick at all. Maybe this is all just WWE sending out the you know rumors for rumors' sake uh, and leak these things on purpose. But um. I don't think so. Do you think Bray Wyatt's even a possibility of the Fiend? No, no, maybe like a two or three percent chance, but that would be just even even then, like I, I wouldn't even be confident on that. But just thought, thinking about like Braun Strowman, maybe maybe think of the Fiend, and you know, maybe, I, but I completely forgot like how they they parted ways with the whole, you know, and and the possibility of of what he went through. So yeah, it's probably not likely at all, at least this year. How about the Rock? He wins and faces uh, Roman. I mean, that's, that's that still floating around be, too. <laughs> that would be wild. I I would lose my mind. Um, 
No, sadly, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think this is the year. But that's kind of why, like I, I, you had mentioned earlier, um, really briefly, like you wouldn't even be uh, upset, um, if if Roman retained this year and went on to Mania next year as the champion without losing it at all. And I agree with you there. Like I don't, unless it's someone that's completely obvious and someone that like really is like like earth shattering you know like and, and it like oh my gosh like you you got to put the, the rocket on him and go in that direction like i don't see why you have to take it off roman at all until it's it's absolutely necessary which is wild for me to to sit here and think of that i'm saying about roman um just thinking back like two three years ago but yeah like i don't keep it on him as long as you need to but i don't and it and if, if the rock is the end point then then so be it but i don't i don't think this is this is the year for that either i think we would have more signs if so I mean, well, the golden egg could be it. I mean, maybe. Oh, well, I was about yeah. to say, you know, maybe yeah. that, maybe we, maybe the golden egg was it, you know. Yeah, that that was it. Oh gosh. I, I, oh, I, I want to get into. It. I mean, that is just it, it, Vince McMahon being back for Austin Theory on a weekly basis is it's just it's one of the more perplexing things. Like Vince McMahon is one of the biggest heel characters of all time. He's the chairman, and he's back for Austin Theory, which is not really working anyway. Like he could just be doing selfies, getting heat as it is. And he's just being berated and, and being tortured backstage by Vince for what? I don't know. It doesn't and the make thing it. That, God. Yeah, and the thing that Vince said about his mother, like how he would like deface Austin and just like mutilate him or whatever the, the verbiage he said was and then take a picture of it and send it to his mother or something to that effect. I was like, what What am I listening to right now? Like, Vince is, I was like, this is absurd. It, it, it's uh, I don't even – I don't – Every time I see this, I'm like, there's got to be something big I'm missing here. Like, yeah, what's the payoff? Yeah. Exactly. What the hell? I was Where like, are I think we I going? I missed a segment. I had to have missed something. Yeah. When, when they started this at Survivor Series, I'm like, oh, this is this is The Rock. Because we all thought at Survivor Series, it's the 25th yeah. anniversary of The Rock. He's coming out. It's going to be Roman Rock. And we're going to build for the next few months. And uh, nope. It was just uh, Austin <laughs> Theory uh, who <laughs> took a – Yeah. Uh, which Vince McMahon just – yeah, it, it, this whole the, the whole thing makes it's almost as bad as retribution at this point. Like, what what, oh. what is this? Um, so, anyway, back back to the rumble. Yeah, look, uh, kind of wrapping things up here. I I don't believe there's going to be anybody like a John Moxley or a Chris Jericho or an MJF. As much as I'd love to see it, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but Roman Reigns right now is still, I believe, the best part of WWE. One of the best parts of WWE, and we're looking uh, already a year in in advance to the next WrestleMania. And last year we were talking about the triple threat between Daniel Bryan, Edge, and Roman Reigns, and we were saying, imagine if he's champion at this year's next year's WrestleMania, and here we are, and he's likely yeah. going to be champion this year's WrestleMania, and could The Rock be the one to, to face him next year with the belt? He could be, but who the hell is Roman Reigns going to face over the next 12 months? Like he's already running oh, out no. of people. They're already having to pick people from other brands. He's running out of opponents. He's literally gone through everybody. So. That is going to be a challenge for the creative team is to find opponents for Roman if they indeed keep want to keep the belt on him for another 12 months. Or maybe it's Rock Roman without the belt. I'm cool with that, too. In fact, I'd rather have it without the belt because it's less predictable. Because then, yeah. you know, I don't think the Rock would become champion. Like That, that I think, the fans would resent because it should be somebody younger that eventually beats Roman for the belt. So, um, uh, anyway, I'm expecting a really good Royal Rumble. Uh, this one is extremely unpredictable. And uh, I didn't, what are your uh, kind of closing thoughts on on the uh, I almost, the premier live event tomorrow night? The premier, yes, yes, of course. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I I think it's gonna be. I, I think in totality, I think it's gonna be a, a good show. I think it's gonna be fun. I'm really curious to see just the look of it and and the layout because with the amount of people that they're expected to have. Um, I think it's gonna be fun in a fun environment. Um, but yeah, I I think. Going into it, like we were talking about with the women's rumble in particular match, the I think it's it's I think it's still gonna end up being pretty good, you know. Like I think the whole show is it's if I'm going to do like an early prediction, I think it's probably gonna be like a seven, a six or seven. Um, so we'll see, but I don't think it's I think everything is gonna deliver. Especially, I, f- I feel like probably the match of the night is going to be that uh, Roman and, and Rollins match, though. I, th- I feel like that's just going to get – I feel like they should at least get 18, 20 minutes, depending on the, the length of the show. Mm. And, oh, yeah. You look at the card, that one would seal the show for sure. Um, and do you? that was the one thing I was talked about at the beginning of the show I never got to. Do you see Matt Riddle turning on Randy here and maybe eliminating Randy? Because they don't actually have a, a – a, do they actually have an official match? I didn't see on the card that they had an official match for the tag team championship. So 
That said, so. do you? I, I didn't see it. So yeah, I don't think so. Um, do you see Matt Riddle potentially turning heel on Randy? It's in Randy's hometown. So having Randy turn heel, number one is we've seen Randy turn heel more times than we can count. Plus, it's in his hometown. The hometown crowd is not going to want to you know, boo the, the hometown hero. But it would be a good opportunity for Matt Riddle to get heat. So do you foresee yeah. maybe you know, Riddle doing something like eliminating Randy or I don't know. It, it, it seems like there's an opportunity here with it being Randy's hometown. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I, I wouldn't. I feel like if, if there is more dissension going on between them on Raw these past couple weeks, I, I feel like maybe I, I would say yes. But <laughs> as crazy as this is going to sound like with how close they were at the spelling being in sync and everything like that. And, and that story with them and, and Chad Gable and uh, Otis, I just feel like that's going to play out for a while. And I feel like if not for nothing, like the tag division on Raw needs it to play out for at least a little bit longer, um, maybe at least until the elimination chamber. But I don't know. Like, I think, I think it is going to end up being riddled that turns on Randy though. Um, well, as I, I don't know, it, as I say that, like I don't, I don't know if, if Vince could see Riddle as a, as a heel. So I think that's going to be like the big thing: how serious Vince sees Riddle. Because I, I feel like, and in, in, I'd be curious your opinion, really quick. How serious do you think Vince is with Riddle right now? And because I feel like if, if you're going to turn someone like the character that he is, like a bad guy, like it's going to, you have to have some type of, of trust and faith in him. And then you're going to have to push him too. Like you can't just turn him and then just do nothing. Like not with someone like him, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. If I've you're always, gonna do it, I've always because we've again, it's not, it's so predictable. We've seen Randy turn heel so many times, it's just, it's mind numbing, and you're just, you're yeah. always waiting for the other, the other shoe to drop with Randy. You're always waiting for the, him to hit that RKO, and then he turns immediately back to a heel. We've seen it a dozen times or more. But with Riddle, like you said, it'd be more interesting. I would love to see what a nasty heel Riddle is, um, you know, from this lovable kind of goofball to this just just total d-bag i'd love to see what that looks like but also like you said the bigger sacrifice is from vince's perspective is we got a guy that can do great comedy you know like he's our comedic relief half the time do we want to get rid of our comedic relief and put it all on the, on the 24 7 title like i mean like what do we want to do uh and i think vince looks at it because he's so he looks at the comedy part of the show as like an, an, an integral part of the show and when if he has a top star that can be a comedian as well, like he views Riddle, then there to him, I think that's how he waits waits this whole thing is he's a great comedic relief. Do we want to yeah. get rid of that? And uh, now that I'm talking about that, I don't know. So because Vince, boy, does he Vince loves him some sophomore comedy, and mm-hmm. Riddle provides it to him on a weekly basis. So I think that Vince would uh, be hesitant to turn him heel. I just, I don't know. I looked at the hometown for Randy. I'm like, there's an opportunity here. Do they do anything oh, sure. or do yeah. they not? You know? So I don't know. Um, but uh, uh, anything else or any, uh, any final comments before we say goodbye? No, I, I think that's everything. I mean, we could probably talk for, for two more hours about it, but I, I think, I, I think that's, we pretty much covered everything though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, we, we covered everything that we could in the time that we had. I mean, like you said, it, sure. th- this is, uh, this, especially the rumble, my God, imagine the conversations after the rumble, there's going to be so much to talk about tomorrow night. My, my brain's going to explode, but, uh, thank you, Ashley. This has been a, a too long and let, let's not go another two months. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll have a real serious sit down with my six month old and say, look, you, you can't be doing this, right? Like you need to listen. We, we need to talk wrestling. All right. Your diaper and your food can wait. So uh, I'll have a serious sit down with her and I'll, I'll, let, I'll let her thank know who's you. boss. Um, sounds good. And then, yeah, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll immediately proceed to get spit up on because that's what she's, she, she spit up on my mouth today okay i I held her up and she just went right in my mouth so uh that's probably the reaction i'll get uh but anyway uh ashley thanks for coming on i i hope you enjoy the rumble and uh do you have any if if you want to share social media oh yeah uh feel free to follow me on twitter at a-s-h-m-a-n-n-s um but yeah thank you so much for having me matt we'll definitely have to link up uh definitely sooner than two months like you said yeah definitely yeah because in two months we may actually be sharing a drink on a beach all right because we'll be oh, in florida for so. sure. <laughs> for sure. all right thanks so much ashley you have a good night you too bye thanks for listening to the wwe podcast don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app 
so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.